อ้าวกระฝากเดินไปหาซ้ายครับมืนบัดหน้าให้สูงไว้หน่อยขวา A forward punch either left or right must always be on the same side as the forward leg so that the boxer can step back immediately ขอยซ้ายครับเข้าหน้าดูดูมือซ้ายบัดหน้าให้สูงไว้กว่ามันหลังเออดีมากกำมัดให้เป็นก่อนนี่วิธีกรรมหนึ่งสองสามแล้วอันที่สองต้องยืนเท้าให้เป็นถ้ามันเฉียงกันอย่างเงี้ยยืนเท้าให้เป็นต่อยนะดูนะดูครูจะครูจะทําต่อยให้ดูมัดก่อนอื่นต้องต่อยมัดซ้ายให้เป็นก่อนหนึ่งเนี่ยสอง You should practice a forward punch by using your full body force behind it. หน้าหน้าหน้านี่ต้องแคบแนบแบบไหลหมัดซ้ายนี่ต้องอยู่ปลายคางเอ๋ศอกอยู่ชายโครงเพื่อกันคู่ต่อสู้ดูคู่หน้าหนูหนึ่งสองซ้าย You should make sure that when you punch, the chin should be at the same height as the shoulders to avoid the counter attack. You punch when you deliver from the same side as the rear leg. The fist and head. Should be at least the width of a glove. Elbows should be held lower than the armpits, and the gloves should not reach above the head. The target of the straight punch may be classified in two parts. That is the face and the chin. In boxing jargon, it is called small target, and is regarded as a very difficult punch. But if applied, it has a devastating effect. The straight punch may be aimed at the body, particularly the stomach, which in boxing jargon is called big target. And is regarded as easier to attack. You can train how to punch the face and the body, and the effect is very powerful. มัดเสยเป็นอาวุธหลักอีกอย่างที่ผู้ฝึกมวยต้องใช้ต่อสู้ระยะ reverse punch aims at the chin of the opponent when you are in the inner circle ขวาซ้ายขวาซ้ายนี่มัดอัปคัดหรือมัดเสยนะภาษาไทยก็เรียกมัดเสยนี่ก็เหมือนกันชกชกด้วยสันหมัดเหมือนกันขวาอ The way you punch depends on the way you do it. There are two techniques. When you attack, you must step closer to the opponent and use a straight punch. When you step back and the opponent comes in too far, you can punch the solar plexus, a vital part of the body, and the rib cage or the chin, as you find appropriate. Reverse punch and swing punch are useful for attack since they are strong, and you can hurl the punch very far, aiming at both temples, the chin and the rib cage.
ข้าวใจคมขวาซ้ายขวา These two punches can solve problems very well, since the strength is powerful enough to make the opponent lose their balance, allowing you to attack him more easily. The essence of Thai boxing is a combination and use of all parts of the body. A good boxer should learn the four basic punching techniques and be very flexible, so that fighting success and achievement can be assured. The elbow is the short-range weapon which each fighter should be proficient in using and be fully aware of the damage it can cause. The use of the elbow may be called the intangible weapon. The use of the elbow is different from the punch since the fighter has to do it in the inner circle. With a more or less horizontally held aim, the elbow is snapped forward with a quick shoulder twist. You should not clench the fists when you strike, since it would make the ligament too tight, and it doesn't result in any greater fighting efficiency. You should open the hands and then learn to strike. It is faster than clenched fists and more powerful. A strike with the elbow does not always aim at the face. One may attack the chest, heart, rib cage, ribs, or even the skin. It is more effective than one might expect. The elbow attack is difficult to defend against. But not many fighters use this technique. Elbowing is a very dangerous weapon and a very complicated technique to apply, and today is almost no longer found in Thai boxing. We may classify the use of the elbow into two types: the down strike and the upward strike. The down strike is an attack aimed at the face. Directed at the top of the head, neck, or spine. When one fighter strikes with the elbow, the other should learn how to defend against it, and then strike back with the elbow in an upward movement, which may hit the chin or the face easily. Thai boxing requires tact and intelligence to turn any disadvantage into an advantage. If the fighter learns to use this properly, the elbow can be a very powerful, efficient weapon. How you defend against the elbow strike is to extend the hand and press on the neck or chest. But when you strike back with the elbow, you should be very careful. We shall talk more about how to strike back with the elbow later. You will find that use of the elbow can be a boxer's secret weapon.
In each training session, the boxer wears a gusset, which should be worn like a belt. It is used in exercises for protection from the knees, a third vital weapon. To use the knees effectively requires a great energy and strength. New spectators may prefer wrestling, but those who know the art of Thai boxing will recognize that use of the knee is an important asset and skill for a fighter to possess. Use of the knees can be very effective and powerful. The trainee must make sure that the toes point down towards the ground, as this motion gives more strength and accuracy to the knee when striking another fighter. The trainee should start to exercise slowly to get acquainted with stretching the legs while both hands touch the gunny bag and learn how to keep the knees straight. You should learn the forward knee kick is aimed at the thighs, rib cage, skin, stomach or the chin. Normally, this technique is used after grabbing the opponent's neck or head, which is jerked down while the knee shoots up, and the knee is directed at the head, solar plexus or stomach area. A boxer attracted to knee can get carried away, trying all the time to grab the opponent's head and attacking with the knees only. He may use it to such an extent that spectators may find it strange and lose interest in the fight. The best way to solve this problem is to learn the art again and avoid striking with the knees when the boxer is too far away. When you are attacked by a knee, the best way is to lift the legs in self-defense. Sometimes you should put the foot in between the opponent's legs. This does not do any harm. Instead, the referee will just separate the two fighters. Thai boxing has its own style of defense. Since the use of the knee is an inner circle weapon, the best defense is to use your elbows to defend yourself and to grab your opponent's neck and knee him at the same time. One style is to use the hands to grab the neck of your opponent. They can retaliate by using the elbows to the left and the right of the body at once. You should act quickly since the target area may be only available for a few seconds. ถ้าเราปัดทางนี้นะมันไปไปถ้าอย่างนี้ไม่ง่าย
To master the technique of using one's knees takes a long time. The best offence is by lifting one knee to halt the attack. The referee will then separate the two fighters. Another style is to grab the opponent's neck in the inner circle and put your hand in between the hands of your opponent and push him away so as to make him lose his balance. These two ways of defence may be ineffective. You could grab another fighter's head and knee him. If you are not strong enough, use your hands to halt your opponent's knee attack. Left, jerk on the right. Right, jerk on the left. The best defence for another fighter grabbing your neck is to use both hands to wrap around his hands so he can not grab your neck so easily. At the same time, you can then use your legs to protect yourself from any knee attack. The knee may not be the best weapon if we compare it with the kick, which is more formidable. The overall knee kick is an often seen technique which is applied when an opponent is grabbed around the waist or lower abdomen. The knee is directed at any point of the body it can reach above the attacker's own arms. When you use your legs, they have the longest reach of any other part of your body. They are used for the so-called jumping knee or knee attack carried out with a run and a jump. This technique is feared by every boxer but much loved by the fans. The defending boxer must shove his attacker away with his foot immediately. <laughs> During a clinch between fighters, they can attack by using the round kick. The kick is a long-range weapon which the boxer can get carried away with if the chance opens up. It is interesting to note the kicks are executed with a full-powered follow-through. The round kick is delivered with the instep or lower shin. Usually rather sensitive parts of the leg that have been toughened to an unbelievable degree. The round kick is directed at the upper and lower parts of the body and has been responsible for a great number of first round knockouts. When a boxer does a round kick, it is done using the shin, not with the toes. The upper leg is softened with repeated kicks. 
Along with this is the side thrust, a function similar to that of the front thrust. It is a push of the foot and not a kick. One should practice this art with dedication and skill. The side thrust is directed at the shin, stomach, chest and face. The back thrust is a push of the foot that is directed at the opponent and is an attacking skill. The jump kick is a combination of both the round kick and the front thrust. It is considered an attack in itself. Not many fighters employ the turn kick. One miss of this kick can result in a swift counter-attack from your opponent. A kick with the toes or sole of the feet is not popular since it is more or less ineffective. A well-aimed kick displays a fighter's superiority and makes his opponent feel small. Punching and the use of legs, knees and elbows as used in the style of Thai boxing demonstrates excellent and accurate techniques. One should believe that training and preparation for a fight is very significant in the final result. All trainees should learn how to stand, step forward and step backward, and use long and short weapons attacking or defensive techniques swiftly. These are the fundamentals of the art of Thai boxing. When the fighter has learnt the art of punching, grabbing the neck, elbowing and kicking the upper part of the body, including how to use these areas of the body proficiently, he should continue to refine these skills in what in boxing jargon is called the minor art. A fighter learns how to defend a punch with straight elbowing. The hand can block the opponent's punch and the elbow can hit the face. This posture is almost the same. The fighter uses the hand to evade the fists and strike his elbow at the chin, neck or nose. When the opponent punches the fighter, he should strike downwards and aim his elbows at the stomach or rib cage area. A fighter may duck a right punch by deflecting it under his arm and strike with his elbow at the nape of his opponent's neck. A foot thrust is a long range technique which can be used to avoid the punch, even if the opponent is very quick. If the opponent punches with his left fist, the fighter may use his right punch to grab the neck and strike his knee on the opponent's ribcage. The fighter moves to the right to evade the punch and uses his left hand to grab the neck and strike with the knee at the ribcage.
A round kick on the left and right helps to evade punches. When the opponent's back leg is kicked, the fighter may bend the body and kick the front leg. The fighter parries off the opponent's punches and kicks him on the neck from either right or left. The fighter steps back a little, uses his left hand to parry off the punch and uses his right hand to grab the head and strike a combination of kicks and knee jerks at the chin or face. Use the left hand to parry off the punch and strike the right elbow at the jaw. Use the left hand to block the opponent's arm and deliver a punch to the face. One should learn to receive the elbow attack and practice how best to counter-attack it. When another fighter kicks, the defender should bend their body quickly, employing the elbow to receive the kick and then to use the elbow to strike out at the shin. The boxer can fight back with the elbow when his opponent strikes at the face. Use two hands to wrap around the hands of the opponent and use the legs to block any knee attack. Or use the hands to grab the chin of the opponent and deliver a knee attack. The fighter may use his knee to deliver a jumping kick. He may lift his right leg to block it. He may lift his knee up to the buttocks. He may strike his left knee on the shin in a counter-attack. He may use a straight punch to hit the opponent's face. Or may swing his punch at the left or right jaw. Use a reference punch on the chin. Or the fighter may bend his body and strike with an elbow. A thrust with the foot 
may be used before an opponent can effectively make a counter-attack. A thrust with the foot may be avoided with a kick. The fighter may push it aside by a left or right foot thrust. One should not alternate between left or right because one may lose balance doing this. A kick on the leg or shin or the body or neck would make the other side lose their bearing. ผู้ฝึกมวยไทยเมื่อฝึกจนสามารถใช้อาวุธหมัดเท้าเข่าสอบทั้ง The trainee learns how to employ the fists, legs, knees and elbows for both attack and counterattack movements. Thai boxing is beneficial in several ways. It is an art in itself. It is good exercise. It may be a source of valuable income for some people, and it is a very efficient form of self-defence.